Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to upgrade the CPU in my Dell PowerEdge T140 server from the base model E2124 processor, which is a 4 core 4 threaded 3.3 gigahertz, to this one. This is a brand new CPU. Well, it's not brand new in terms of what Intel has to offer, but this is a Xeon E2136. E6 at the end here designates that this is a 6 core CPU. If we take a look at uh, the advertised specifications here, this one has hyper-threading technology, which the old one does not. And all the other things are basically the same. So we still have DDR4 ECC support, which is in there already. Of course, we have AVX, which is, you know, good. Turbo boost and virtualization, which we obviously need. So this is the 2136. The old one is the 2124. I'll overlay the differences in terms of clock speeds uh, here on the video. So you can see uh, the main differences between them. Uh, we'll be going up in terms of TDP from 71 to 80 watts, but that is a welcome trade in terms of CPU power because this is a six-core, six-thread CPU, and it also turbos higher than the uh, 2124 does. Uh, this will definitely give the performance of the server a nice boost while not consuming a hell of a lot more energy. I think this is the best CPU in terms of value that you can put in a server like this. The 2236 is a bit faster, and it's a bit newer, it's got feel like refresh. But um, the main downside to that CPU is that it's pretty hard to find, and it's very expensive. If we go over the pricing of this one, this one I think I bought for... I think it was... Uh, well, overlay the price here. I'm not quite sure again what, uh, what I ordered this for, but was reasonably affordable. You can also get an 8-core CPU, a 2238 or 4, it's 2288 I think is the best one you can put in here with the G uh, at the end. So what is fun about this little thing here, it also comes with a cooler which we will not be using because it's shit. It just is. Intel does not know how to make a proper stock cooler. It's pretty heavy though, for what it is. All that we're interested in is the attached CPU. So in case you want something to laugh about, here is the stock cooler. There is honestly no way in hell that this can cool a 6-core, six 6-thread six CPU uh, with 80-watt TDP. The, these CPU coolers were basically, they're basically still the same as you got on later Core 2 Duos with 45 nanometer uh, node. So like the E7500 or E8400, this was the cooler you got with them. Basically, it's still more or less the same. It just has a copper slug, so it's slightly better than the bare minimum. But it's still not great. So all we're really interested in is this little thing here. The Xeon E2136. Same base clock, higher boost clock. Going to be a nice upgrade. Right, so without further ado, let's just uh, go straight to uh, replacing the CPU on this bad boy, and then we'll uh, compare numbers on uh, the old CPU and uh, go from there.
All right, as you could see, the upgrade was completed. We have now logged onto the iDRAC here, so we can see the system is healthy. It has successfully identified the system. Well, that's good. Let's go to CPU. It hasn't found a new CPU yet. So uh, without further ado, let's just power it on and see what it does. Just looking over, I can see it is actually booting up. You can probably hear it in the background as well. At least it's turning on, that's a good sign. I've updated it to the latest BIOS before I uh, did the upgrade, just to make sure that uh, the CPU we supported. So now it's going to train the memory. Again, we have 48 gigabytes running at 2400 megahertz because two sticks are running at 2400 and uh, two are running at 2666 so they're always running at uh, the lowest common denominator all right that's all looking fine We just wait for it to quiet down a bit, and it has. And here we are going to boot into our hypervisor, which is a USB 3 flash drive. And as you can tell, it is pretty quick. It's one of those really tiny ones, so. It's nice and hidden. And now we should see what CPU is that it detects. There we go. E2136, 3.3 gigahertz. All of that is looking pretty good. Right. It's going to get stuck at that point for a little bit, so we can uh, just take a look around the iDRAC now. And now here we can see it is the E2136. We have six CPU cores detected. So that's pretty cool. It also has a warning that it could not detect a previous CPU. Well, that's logical, I would think. Let's see here, we still need to enable something. Let's see, logical processing, that's enabled, that would be hyperthreading. So I did enable that right away, that's good. Logical processor idling, I should enable that actually on the next reboot. But other than that, there is nothing I should need to do here. Let's take a look at the cooling. It's running a 23% PWM. That's absolutely fine. CPU is running at 30 degrees at the moment. That's also perfectly fine. It's actually lower than the 2124. That would sit at 40 degrees all the time. Fan speed is 23%, like I said, that's good. I've set the PCIe airflow to custom. You can put in a couple of commands through PowerShell and it will allow you to uh, disable the PCI fan response. It used to be just a single BIOS switch on the generation 13 of Dell servers, but on generation 14, you really need to do it through PowerShell. And uh, once I discovered that a couple days ago, I immediately put it to work. And at least now I have PWM control again but I don't have the fence running at 100% because that was just insane. But anyway... It would appear that ESXi has finished booting up. And it has. Let's log in. OK, 
Okay, our main ma virtual machines have finished booting up already. Also, it's reporting the same 19.9 .9 gigahertz that it uh, did before because it's still a 3.3 gigahertz CPU at its base. So six times that would still mean 19.9. .9. Well, at first it would actually be like four times 3.3, .3, so that's 12 plus 1.2 would be about 13 gigahertz. So yeah, it did actually increase. I'm just being stupid. So that's fine. So let's scan our software iSCSI configuration here. So we get all of our data stores back up and running. We scan that. There we go. All of our VMs are back. That's good to see. So what we're going to do now, we're going to shut this machine down. We're going to assign all the cores to it. And then we'll run some benchmarks. I've already done the same with the uh, 2124 that preceded this one. So now we can assign all 12 threads to it. It's not a big deal to keep this one running. As you can tell, it's only consuming 53 megahertz. That's not enough to make an impact at all. It's running at the pretty much worst conditions anyway, because quite frankly, like this 12 cores on one socket because I'm already running the host at low power mode. So it will uh, go down to as low as clock speed as possible whenever it uh, it can. So now we just wait for this to boot up and then we'll uh, run some benchmarks in this machine and I'll uh, talk about the results uh, in a little bit. So uh, I've run Cinebench R15, R20 and Geekbench 5 and uh, we'll uh, get a chance to look at the score side by side, at least for this server. Again, they're not very representative for the real thing when you're running at bare metal and at uh, maximum power settings, but it's still a good way to uh, compare the two, I think. So uh, let's get to the benchmark, shall we? The first benchmark we're going to look at here is Geekbench 5, and as you can tell, we went uh, considerably up in terms of multi-core score from 3500 to 5800. And here we have Cinebench R15. Again, we almost doubled the score, from going from 4 cores, 4 threads, to 6 cores and 12 threads. And here is Cinebench R20, again, almost doubling the score from 1572 to 3021. So I guess it uh, you can really tell this has been a very worthwhile upgrade. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this upgrade video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.